Well, hello everyone. Um, my name is Tim, and uh, what I'm going to do is show you um, how I salvage uh, some old beat up uh, tapes. Now, this tape isn't all that beat up. Uh, it's rubber plant now and then, and uh, I pl was playing it, and there was a, a nasty dropout in it and uh, thinking that maybe it was just uh, magnetically wiped or something like that. I tried to, so what I did was I have a copy of this digitally on uh, CD. And so what I ended up doing was copying it um, side by side, you know, as, as per the original uh, tracks on the tape. And I think there's one more tape, uh, track on the CD than on the tape. Um, so anyway, I was following what the uh, what they had on the tape and uh, recorded it again and uh, yeah, tape a shot. Uh, dropout, didn't record over it. Um, probably left out in the sun or in the heat or something like that. So what I'm going to do is, because um, I like the tape and it's part of my collection, I, uh, what I'm going to do is this one unfortunately doesn't doesn't have the uh, the screws on it where you can actually unscrew it and take it apart and then find a donor tape to put inside of it which is normally what I would do I'd get a nice high quality chrome tape and actually make a better recording than probably it ever was at the uh, the factory you know coming out of the factory because these are high speed dubbed usually on normal bias tapes um, so they're not they're not as good sounding as they could be so um, I have a whole stack of these um, Sony UCX 60s or chrome tapes. I bought them off of a fellow. Most of them have been used once. This one appears to have been used twice. And uh, they're in really, really good shape. And uh, I don't use 60 minute tapes just because I normally record one album aside. So I use 90 minute tapes for my own uh, recordings. Uh, I find 60 minutes are usually too short uh, if I'm making my own recording. So I use these as uh, donor tapes, and of course these ones are screwed, so they're easy to uh, un disassemble if I'm using another tape to uh, uh, port it into. But in this case, uh, this tape does, is a welded tape, or a welded case, and uh, what I would like to do is transplant the tape in here inside of that. So here's how I do it. So what I'll do is uh, set up my workspace here. And normally, what I do is I'll tape down the cassette that's going to be going to be my uh, receiving tape, and this, receiving the uh, donor tape. And that's in this case, this is the one I'm trying to salvage. And just to make it nice and uh, solid on the uh, the workbench, because what I'll end up doing, I'm going to keep the hubs clear is I use my drill here that you can see and what I have is a T45 Torx bit in it that uh, allows me to uh, wind tapes. Okay, we can wind and unwind. There we go. go. Slowly as I get to the end so I don't stretch out and snap the tape or whatever. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach inside this uh, cassette and I'm going to pull it out to the end of the leader. And here we go. And once I get to the end of the leader, and now I, I know I, I, I've got a, um, a splicing block. I got out of tapes for quite a few years. And, of course, got rid of all my splicing blocks and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just uh, reacquiring all those things. I, I got a collection of about 1,400 tapes, some of which uh, were in not tip-top condition. So I'm just working, working to salvage ma as many of those as possible. And uh, just want to make sure I'm recording here, not talking to myself. I am. Uh, so. Basically, all I'm going to salvage out of the, orig out of the original pre-recorded tape here is the, uh, the leader on both ends. So, what I'm going to do is get... Oh, 
clumsy hands. So what I'm going to do, I've also got uh, proper splicing tape on order, but uh, I couldn't wait, so I just wanted to show you how I, I do this. Um, I'm just going to use scotch tape in this case. And uh, so what I do, is so I use these lines just to uh, line up the tape. You can see this one's a bit out. So we'll just lift it and make sure it's nice and square to that line because what I'm going to do, so I'm going to use my little razor blade here and cut it off at the leader. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to got my trusty garbage can. You can see I've done one tape already today. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the tape out of this one and into the garbage it goes. So this will take a while. The idea not to damage the leader because I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to salvage the leaders. And I'll just tape it off to the side and I'm going to splice on. This will take a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this down so you don't have to sit here uh, and watch me unstring this whole thing. But you get the idea. Uh, we'll get rid of all the tape on this one. There you have it, we're out to the leader. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut that leader off, this tape off. Tape this off to the side, just so I don't, it doesn't go back into the case and get lost. And in fact, I'll try to get this out of the way here because I don't want it to be in the way of my uh, winding here. So this is where this part comes in. So now this is my donor tape. I'm going to pull the leader out on this side. And I do it at, a, at about an angle like that. And I'm going to tape that tape down and you'll see what uh, cassette down and you'll see why pretty soon. So once again, we'll be splicing on the back side of this. And this we can get rid of. We don't need that anymore. We're going to pull this out. Oops without damaging the tape, hopefully. We're on the back side of the tape here. I find it very handy to use these needle nose pliers to, or uh, tweezers to uh, line things up. And I should have got some tape here. Let's do that. Just a little sliver of tape just to hold it down. Line the two edges up. Ah. There we go. And I'm going to press these down together. Trying to get them lined up.
there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them where they overlap and remove the excess pieces. There we go. And then we will splice them. And there's the back blue piece. So those should be perfectly lined up together. And hopefully I left myself enough space here. Put these, splice these together. There we go. And then I use the end of a steel ruler here to uh, line up the edges and trim my pieces. There we go. That one. That one. And there we have a nice splice and here's where it gets tricky so what we're going to do I'm going to take this guy move him further out of the way so it doesn't get pinched by the uh, the winding process we're going to take this guy down This guy from a previous job. there that should work and now what we're gonna do make sure we're winding the right way and we're now transferring the tape from one tape to the other Good idea to keep an eye on the other one to make sure you don't get go full speed and uh, snap the tape at the end. Getting close. Very close. There's our leader. So I'll pull that back out. And we're going to cut it. So one of these ends we're going to have to splice again simply because um, these are 60 minute tapes. These are usually a lot shorter than 60 minute tapes. So you have to. Uh, do your longest side recording first and then uh, then you know where to cut it and then you can uh, have it the right desired length and then you uh, do that second splice so um, 
using our trusty razor blade here. And more than likely, this is the end of, uh, well, this is the beginning of side two. So we want to get a good position to, there we go. And now this donor tape is empty and no longer required. So it is, uh, goes into the parts bin. Just because I always keep uh, spare parts in case I'm uh, rebuilding another tape. And then that can go in the garbage. And now it's just a simple splicing job. So, uh, get my tweezers. You don't want to be very careful with the tape so you don't crease it. And same with this guy. Now we've got this one to, uh, the beauty of these tweezers, I like them, is because they are, they're good at winding the tape in a little bit if you've got excess. So we'll get another couple of uh, pieces of scotch tape just as a, just for holding them down. Oh, goodness gracious. There we go. Get all the excess little bits that are off on my mouth. And make sure they line up with the lines there just to get it as straight as possible for splicing. There we go. And then this piece, making sure we identify the back side and the front side. Once again, we do the same thing on this side. Line it up. Get as close to as possible. It's probably about there. Take your little piece of tape, pre-cut, just push it down there to hold it, find where the overlap is, quite a bit of overlap here so we're going to have to move this a bit. I do have a splicing block as I mentioned on order. This will make this job a lot easier. And I also got splicing tape on order, so hopefully this job will be a little bit easier down the road. So what we're gonna do is, oh, that's my tape there. What we're gonna do is cut the overlap here a little bit. So we have a, a nice even splice. Get rid of the extra bits here. And behaving. There we go. Perfect. That's that splice. Go back to our trust, trusty end of a steel ruler as a straight edge. There we 
we have it. Nice little splice. And again, with splicing tape, you won't have to go because it'll be the proper width and you can put it on easily with the edge of a razor blade. And uh, there you have it. Splice is good. Perfect. Now we'll just use the tweezers to wind the tape in without creasing it, hopefully. There we have it. So, now what we have is a nice Sony UCX tape. That's been transplanted into this uh, chrome tape. That's been uh, transplanted into this. Now I'm lucky in that I, ha I use Nakamichi tape deck, so you can manually set your uh, chrome and bias. So you'd want to be careful about uh, what type of tape you're transplanting into these. So I can actually record these, even though they don't have the chrome uh, holes on these, uh, because mine allows me to set the bias and the uh, the EQ on my tapes manually without having to worry about uh, automatic detection and overriding it on uh, on some of the newer cassette decks. So I've got about four Nakamichi decks and all of them are manual. So they're a little bit better for working with these types of uh, uh, things where you're taking a normal bias tape, replacing it with a chrome, you're going to record it in chrome and it'll probably be much at, at standard speed instead of high speed dubbing like they make these things at the factory. And you will probably get a way better sounding tape. So because of the, uh, you know, this is a, a rough winding sort of technique, it's actually came out pretty smooth. What I like to do is I like to rewind, fast forward at once just to get the reel all smooth and make sure the transport is working good. I've got a cheap deck here in my garage that I use to uh, fast forward, rewind my tapes. And to do a playback just to make sure it's not going to gum up on me. And then that's when I'll uh, transport it over to my Nakamichi's and then I'll record it on a uh, uh, three head Nakamichi tape and then uh, with the original program material in uh, high res flak lossless and uh, it'll make a much better sounding pre-recorded tape than this was ever uh, brand new. Um, so that's how I um, do my tape transplants. So if you have any questions please, please leave any comments. Uh, I do, I should mention, like I say, that the uh, uh, the length of the tape, because that's a 60 minute tape, the length of this is probably 45. So what I'll do is find the longest side, record that side, flip it over, record that side, and then I can uh, cut cut the excess tape off, off and pull out the excess tape and then put the reattach the leader um, to the right length that this tape should be. And that's how I finish it up. So there you go. Um, that's how I do it. Thanks for watching.